welcome. We're um, here today just to have a look at some CEA arc machines, um, the multi-process inverters. Um, we're here with Mick from CC Welds. Um, he's going to run us through some functions and all the rest of it. Uh, Mick, so what all are right. we here today, mate? Thanks, Chris, and g'day, everybody. Uh, yeah, look, today we've got the range of uh, our portable uh, multi-process welding machines. Um, now all of these machines, uh, they're actually made in Italy by CEA um, and they are certified industrial machines. So they don't just call their machines industrial, uh, they comply to a standard that allows them to do that. So not aimed at the home handyman market, so they're aimed at uh, industry. But what we've got here is a range, uh, these portable machines, they range from the Trio Star, which is uh, 16 kilos, 240 volt, right through to the, to the three phase 255 in the in the convex, and it only weighs 21 kilos, so very portable, great for maintenance. Okay, first of all, we've got to uh, so look at the range, uh, the Trio Star range, which is available in the 1800 and the 2000 model, so it's a non-pulse version and a pulse version, single phase. Uh, only weighs 16 kilos, so very handy for those on-site maintenance jobs. Uh, the, then we step into the convex range. The convex is also available in uh, three phase as well as single phase, pulse version and, and non-pulse. But the beauty about the CEA product is that the control layout on these machines is basically the same all through their model. So it's very good in a workshop where you've got a number of different machines and, uh, and different uh, job requirements. So you can go from one machine to the other without having to get the manual out and work out how they work. And I notice this one's got a bit of a larger spool holder and this one will obviously take the smallest spool. Yeah, look, yeah. look, but the Trio Star model, uh, the standard uh, machine will take your, your five kilo spools. Yep. Uh, it has got the ability to put a, an adapter on the back to take a, a 15 kilo spool if that's oh, required. Oh yeah, that's handy. Uh, but with the, with the convex model, you can you can use a, it'll take a 15 kilo uh, straight off the bat, or you can put down a smaller roller wire. So it's yeah, very yeah. flexible as far as that goes. But these are still synergic, aren't they? Are they synergic? absolutely? Yep. In all these models, you've got the ability to to run the machine in a in a synergic mode, or you can select manual in there and operate it as a standard MIG, just as wire feed speed and volts. Oh, so yeah, this is like standard MIG, eh? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, but uh, except for when you're welding in the pole, if you've got a pulse machine, uh, you have to run it to the synergic program. You, you wonder if anyway. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it marries up about five or six different parameters at one time to, to take all that extra uh, work off the operator to try and find those settings. So Yeah, it simplifies it. Eh? I notice it's just got a plate thickness and... Absolutely, yeah. All the rest of it there makes it very easy to use. So you'll see that they're a common... The, the panel on the front is, is common on both of them, even that's a sm slightly smaller panel. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and in the convex range, you've also got the ability with this uh, plug at the front here to hook in a, a torch that's got an up-down function control on it. Oh, so you can adjust... Good your output at the torch if required, yeah. Yeah, that's handy. Yeah, it yeah. is very handy. So it's also multi-process, I see stick welding, TIG welding, and a, and a Absolutely, drill. so to go through, the first thing the operator's got to select is whether, what process, he, what type of welding he wants to do. If he yep. wants to do MIG welding, or on MIG, we can use this button here, the MEM button, just to tab down through the different processes. And we'll go through that in a little bit more detail later on with the, Basically, the screen can be easily broken up to about four different areas that to set on each time you want to go with them. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And the, every site we deal with these days, it needs a VRD. Are they VRD compliant? They have. They got the VRD uh, uh, module everything in there, so it's it's ready to go. So if you've got a site that that needs compliance with VRD, yep. uh, the whole range is covered with that. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, Chris, so, yeah, look, basically the first thing that we need to do is put the, the right drive rolls in for the, for the type of wire that we're using, which is simple enough to do. Uh, then we refer to the, uh, the quick reference inside the door of the wire feeder. Saves you going back to an operator's manual to, to go and search through to find what you want to do. Yep. There's a quick reference for your selection of the material of the machine. So what we've got to tell the machine is, is what wire we're going to run in it. And it's... Uh, it will then be able to work in its synergic program to give us uh, uh, the correct results. So 
For argument's sake, we look in here and you'll go down the program and you'll see aluminium wire. We'll scan across to the side there. We're looking at uh, the type of wire that we're running, which is a 5000 series. And it tells us for one millimetre wire, we need to set it on program 412. So to set that up first, we need to make sure that we're on the MIG mode, which we are. Come across to the program button, press that. Uh, you'll bring up the left hand dial will scroll through the different functions of the machine, so PLS for, for pulse, uh, CLD is a, uh, is, a, is a cold well program, uh, MAN for, for manual and uh, standard MIG. Then we can also go DPL which is double pulse, so if we're going to be welding aluminium we want pulse and double pulse yep. features in there. So on the double pulse, and we've looked across here and it tells me that I've got to use program 412, so we select the double pulse, turn that through till we get 412. Right, now we've told the machine that we want to do double pulse and we're using one millimeter aluminium wire. Uh, if we were going to go on single pulse, we need to turn that to PLS, single pulse, but put that same program number in. Yep, so that changed then, didn't it? Abs I think a couple of people have got tricked up on that before. Yeah, you need to set it for each process that you want to do. If we yep. left it on that there, that's probably for a steel program. You'll it's have aluminium cool. wire in there and the machine will think that, uh, you know, I'm welding steel. So yep. it's not going to give you the right features. So uh, easy enough to turn that through until we get that 412. 412, but if we want to start off doing dual pulse, just go back to DPL, Yep. Uh, hit the button, and then whatever you've got it set on there is what we're going to be welding in. So once you get out of that program, the easiest thing, if you know what amps you're generally welding at, you can work by amps, the easiest thing to set up is, is your plate thickness. Yeah, that's easy. So so as you, as you turn that up, you will get the ideal voltage, and it also marries up four or five other parameters in the background. Uh, Pulse has traditionally been, uh, in, in the old days, it was fairly uh, complex to set up a machine. This takes all the hard work out of it, makes it very simple. Uh, if we tweak that right hand dial, we'll find that it'll come up with a zero mark and zero indicates to us, it's just a quick reference to see that we're on the, on the standard Synergic program. But we've got the ability of this machine to go plus or minus of their program up to 30% variation. So we can give it more voltage to wire feed speed ratio or vice versa. So Would you ever uh, use up to 30 <coughs> mic? Would you ever go No, past look to be to 15? be honest, they, they give you they give you a scope there that uh, if you're up on the 30 it probably wouldn't run very good at all. So yeah. it's just the the ability with the electronics is there to, to adjust it right outside of their parameters. But uh, I've, I've found that the factory settings are, are pretty good. It's just in there, so for the uh, each individual welder's got a, a slightly different way that they weld, so they can tweak that to get the, the ideal spot that they want. Yep, so zero, basically zero spatter, perfect weld. Absolutely, absolutely. Happy if you, days. Uh, with aluminium in particular, if we were doing a, an overhead weld, yep. uh, we would go into the negative side a bit now. So what, the, what we're doing there was we're giving uh, less uh, voltage and, and more wire feed speed basically. So we're going to have the wire coming out of the gun further uh, with, a, with a shorter arc rather than a spread arc, which you don't want when you do an overhead yeah, uh, because you're going to get the stuff out. dropping down again. So uh, the other area is if you're doing a vertical up in a, in a tight corner to corner, yep. uh, going into the negative is going to make the wire go further into the arc pool and you'll get more of a, a dip transfer than a spray transfer which is desirable and you're not going to get it arcing on the sides. So yep. again if you a good check when you're always uh, going back to weld and, and if somebody else has been using the machine is always tweak that dial and see what it's on you know it could be up on 30 percent and it's really in most cases it's not going to weld very good on that setting so, yeah, so if you got bring it back to 30, zero you got an issue Generally, yeah, that's that's a, a. It's always a quick reference. Make sure you're on the zero to start with, and then you can tweak it to your uh, to your liking. Yep. So if I turn the machine on and off, <coughs> so I turn it off one afternoon, come back the next day, turn it on. Yep. 
saves the settings. It's got it? an automatic memory function in there, so whatever you were welding on in the last uh, job, it'll come up on those settings. So, yep. which is also a handy one if uh, if we do have a customer that's having problems, the first thing we do is power the machine up and have a look and see what settings are on. Uh, yep. Number one, we make sure that we're on the right program, uh, and that's your first thing. If you're not on the right program, it's not going to weld properly for you. Yep. But these machines will, will give you that um, uh, repeatability as once you've got that process set there, it'll, it'll give you that same result each time. All right, perfect. Thanks for that.